hello Kelly Bear here welcome to my channel as you'll see from the title today is going to be a monthly favorites video or as I like to call them things what tickled my pickle um, if I seem a bit off or a bit tired it's because I am I've been unwell for over a week and I'm not sure if the antibiotics I was prescribed um, have done the trick so I might have to go back for more but we shall see how that shakes out um, and that sort of brings me on to sort of uh, the rest of the update about the month um, the first two weeks of March went pretty well um, but the the last two weeks the second half of the month have just have just been a lot and partially that is because I've been unwell which hasn't really helped because there was also a lot of family stuff going on um, where I was having to sort of provide some assistance assistance and support and um, then I got sick and then wasn't able to do that. <laughs> so it's been a bit of a hot, hot mess. Um, and yeah, I've been, on, uh, I've been resting a lot, which means, yeah, I've sort of not been able to do a lot of the things that I usually do or would like to do. I had to sort of pull out of attending a couple of locally organised um, protests, which was um, kind of gutting I that I really wanted to go to um activism is something i like to keep involved in but i've been sort of you know writing to my mp signing petitions you know doing the usual um the, the, when i was able to from from my bed because i was in bed for a chunk of this week uh so yeah in between all the napping um i'm a lot better than i was a week ago this time last week this is why there wasn't a, there wasn't a video last week because i was really bad i was really unwell <laughs> it wasn't even it wasn't happening and I had a shop drop <laughs> and I had to I, I had to just get that live and somehow get things wrapped and posted out in the first couple of days of the week <laughs> which then uh yeah left me like fully like wiped out by like the second half of Tuesday and I, that was it I was I was in bed with my medication and everything <laughs> so um so yeah anyway so that's like a little little kind of life update without going into like all the details because you are here uh for for tarot and books and maybe some other stuff else I, I usually have misc stuff down on my list i've got my, my phone of notes my phone of notes um here to uh tick stuff off I you know what even though I have like the literal tick boxes you know you can have the tick boxes on the the note app the note feature on your phone well mine does anyway um I still sometimes like miss stuff off oh my god my brain um <laughs> I just sabotage myself um but yeah I've got you know you, uh, for those of you that might not have watched one of these videos before I, I usually talk about um decks first starting with tarot and then going on to like oracle and the normal or anything else then I go on to books that I've read and I'll also be talking about things that came into my collection not just stuff that I worked with but for new things to my collection to me um and sometimes I'll talk about the things that I want to be working with in the next month and then sometimes if I have time, how many times can I say sometimes? I keep saying, I feel like I've just said that so many times. Times, sometimes, times, sometimes. Um, I will talk about like YouTube channels that I've been enjoying um, and um, the like maybe TV or films, uh, podcasts, Instagram accounts, random miscellaneous stuff, you know, it just depends how long the videos get and how I'm feeling. Cause sometimes I have like, a but like the last couple that I've done I've had a buttload of decks and books to show so they've just gotten really long and I've been like I'm just gonna like leave the other stuff out um so yeah I am going to get stuck in oh I also wanted to say uh, today is the 31st of March so happy Easter to anyone who uh, celebrates and happens to be watching it this video on the day that it comes out and also um it's the trans day of visibility so i just want to point that out and say you know i am thoroughly in support of trans rights i think trans rights are human rights they are human it's not what i think of that they are <laughs> they are human rights um no one cares what i think most of the time i don't think and um uh and yeah i i and 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 and, and, and the movement needs to be intersectional if it's going to be um, effective and equitable 
and I just wanted to put that out there. Um, I already posted on that on my socials, my other social media things, and I've already lost followers and subscribers and stuff because the trash likes to take itself out every time without fail. Whenever I post about any social justice issue, it, it, I lose, I lose followers, I lose followers. But yeah, we don't miss those people. Those people need to um, work on themselves a little bit more. We all need to work on them. It makes it sound like I'm perfect. Pfft, my God, no way. But you know what I mean? We try to be as inclusive as possible and as expansive as possible and trying to make the world a better place for fucking everyone. Wow, political rant right up front. Five and a half minutes in. Can't help myself. Anyway, so that set the tone. Also, I'm just like extra ranty today because I couldn't go to the protests that I wanted to go to. <clears throat> and because, um, yeah, I just feel like I've not been able to like be as effective in the things that I usually do and it's just frustrating. So, yeah, I feel like I'm just belaboring the point here. So I'm just going to I'm just going to get on with it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to talk about the decks that I worked with, starting with well, I'm going to talk about the, the combinations of decks that I was working with. So I had been working with this deck here, which would help if I took it out, um, which is the me no, I've taken the wrong one out. I thought which pouch was it in? Oh, it's the one with the yellow ribbon. Do you know what? I made two um, like tried to make two machine sewed felt pouches and one's got a, I put like the and I've just kept they're like prototypes. And one's got a burgundy ribbon, and I've got Tarot of a Moon Garden in, and one's got a yellow ribbon, and I keep getting confused just because they don't have charms on. Charms usually help me just know which deck is in there, because I usually like theme the charms to the deck <laughs> um, that I put in there. But these are prototypes, so I didn't do that. I was like, I'm not wasting my charms on prototypes. Um, but uh, yeah, I need to go get the one with the yellow ribbon. Luckily, I've already got the boxes out. I nearly got my spouse to lift those up and put them back away for me because my back's bad at the moment I can't um because I've been laying in bed so much I can't um lift those boxes so I'm just going to pause this this just fair warning this video is going to be a hot mess I'm just putting it out there okay I really apologize so hang on I have it I should have remembered that I, I usually remember that this one is the one with the yellow ribbon because this one this deck this one this deck has more yellow in it it has like a, like a lot of blue and yellow in it which is why I put this particular deck in there because it only came shrink wrapped when I bought it off of like I think it was make playing cards or printer studio I've had it for several years now I don't know but can you see why like it goes right the yellow and the blue and the Tower of a Moon Garden, these colours go a bit better, the sort of reds and the blues. And there's also like purples in that one as well. Anyway, so yeah, I've been using, this is the Melanated Classic Tarot. Um, so it's basically a redrawing of Pamela Coleman Smith's artwork. I think I showed this in my last video because I was using it in the last week of February. It's a really great, um, really great sort of Smithwaite. I don't know if you want to call it a clone, I guess, because it is a redrawing of the exact artwork, but it features people of the global majority. Um, and I, th I think this deck is still available. The only thing that bugs me is that the Eight of Wands is used as the backs of the cards, which sometimes does throw me off even now. Um, but I believe that that has been changed due to feedback from people, and the, the, card, the card back is like a sort of... A, a specific design for for the backs now which makes it less confusing but you know and i have considered actually the cardstock's great like it doesn't it's it's flexible but strong um and it's not too shiny it's not too matte it's really nice actually i quite like it it riffle shuffles beautifully which is why i've sort of been reticent to back it with contact paper to cover this because it does you know i've sort of kind of just made my peace with it at this point over using it but yeah as you can see it is it's literally a Smithwaite redrawn and it's just nice to work with the deck it's literally all people of colour it's there's no white people in it and I think that is entirely fair honestly and I and I, I, I always enjoy working with this because the colours are so vibrant I, I tend to pull this out in summer if I'm reading Smithwaite because it's so um it's so bright but for some reason, I just felt like I really needed from the end of February. I really felt like I needed, I guess, that little bit of sunniness. I mean, look at this Empress. Um, and then 
um, as I have said in my previous um, faves videos and some of my other like non faves videos that I've been not been using tarot as much or actually maybe I well I was originally pulling a daily tarot card and building on top of the weekly tarot card that I did on the Monday um, but what I've been doing is I've literally been doing a week ahead reading for the month of March I didn't do any full disclosure I didn't read any tarot oracle Lenormand absolutely nothing in the last seven days I did manage to do a little bit of reading did I do? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't even do any last weekend because I didn't even do my Lenny readings last weekend. Now that I think about it, I could check my my uh, divination journal, but I don't want to like have to pause and go downstairs again because it's it's in the kitchen because that's where I do my daily readings in the morning because my spouse will be in bed and I'm an early riser and so I'll be down there in the morning, early hours, wee hours at the kitchen table, just you know doing my little readings, beavering away, writing in my journal um with a cuppa um but yeah anyway so i what i've been doing at least for the month of march maybe a, for the last week of february i can't remember again i'm so sorry i feel like i'm being really rambly even more rambly than usual and inarticulate um if you're finding it really unbearable please feel free to to not watch this video but i'm my brain fog is like off the charts and i like i said i'm feeling really i'm, I'm not like i'm not well <laughs> um and i just but i I'm, I'm losing my marbles i'm so bored and i haven't had the spoons to like read for over a week and it's driving me bananas and i was like i just want to do something fun so i just wanted to do this fun video but it's turning into a, into a mess so what i've been doing for the third time i try to explain the same thing oh my god i would pull a week ahead tarot reading with week ahead tarot reading with tarot and then an, an oracle card for the week and then at least monday through friday sometimes on a saturday and or sunday but always through monday through friday except this last week um L daily lenormand readings two to three card lenny readings so i combined this with a deck that i think i'd already been using towards the end of february i cannot remember because what even is time and it's the between the worlds oracle and actually the between the worlds oracle by monica badersky should you be wondering if you've not heard of it before um the it's i've been using this exclusively this oracle deck exclusively definitely for all of this month possibly again since the end of february and i didn't check my my journal for for filming but i'm really this is the card that i had for not this week because i didn't pull any for this week but for the week before uh, and this skull represents ancestors and this really made sense as a draw for like the stuff from luck from the not this week from last week um and but yeah anyone who's not seen this before this is basically a curios and bone casting um deck monica badersky has been collecting um bones and little curios and tchotchkes um for almost her entire life and i mean she said she has hundreds of them she's got hundreds of things that she's collected over a lifetime and she decided to pick a number of them i think there's like 45 or 50 of them i can't remember off the top of my head and she painted them so that we could work with her items and the book is fantastic um i found this was one of the decks that doesn't work very well as a message of encouragement and support type um drawers for like the week or the day um so i've been pulling an item and saying give me a talisman to work with or to support me during the week a talisman for the week and i found that sort of phrasing that kind of framing of it a lot better and yeah i mean i've had this deck since when did i get it last uh, december 22 very early january 23 and it's been one of those that i come back to again and again and the thing is because it's um quite neutral the color tones it works really nicely with a with a bunch of of, of other decks it pairs nicely i should say um and yeah does anyone else have this deck i'd be interested to know how you find it and sort of how you are um how you work with it but yeah i've been pulling a talisman I, I find i get a little sort of stuck when i'm trying to if i try to do spreads with it i find the guidebook doesn't really lend itself 
to that very well. I feel like this is like a one card type thing. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really, I'm really enjoying that. So I paired that with this. And then I was reading with a Lenormand and the Lenormand, I think if, and who wants to guess which Lenormand it has been because it's, it's the one I've been mentioning so much lately, but it's, it's the brown witch lady. And I actually, th I, that's, it's, it's, um, they, 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 they're so different in like their colorations. You've got the, the bright, almost like primary color, vibrant tones, summery tones of, of this one. You've got the, um, the sort of neutral tones of this one. And then you've got like, um, there's a sort of a lavender marbled um, border and a white background. And then there's all sorts of, there's quite a bit of purple and green. Maybe that's why I'm also really drawn to this deck because purple and green are my two favorite colors other than black. Um, but yeah, they, they all spoke really nicely together, even though like aesthetically, they don't necessarily jam well like when you look at them laid out but like their energy kind of they vibe <laughs> nicely together so um yeah and this is this is the the final copy i've been using this lovely linen cardstock final copy um for my my daily readings and then the original prototype i have downstairs in my uh, cupboard in the hallway which is my like to go like grab that's going to be my reading outside the house lenny readings outside the house um i can chuck it in my backpack or whatever my handbag and um yeah so they they worked really lovely together um and i worked with so because i'd worked with this for the last week of february i then worked with this for the first week of march and then i put it aside um, because um, I wanted to, you know, I have loads of decks and I want to give as many of them uh, the love and attention and work with the, like, you know, when you have loads, of, it's, it's impossible sometimes to, when you get to a certain point, to use all of them, like, you know, hopefully over my lifetime, I will be able to work with all of them to a certain extent, as long as I don't keep adding too many more. <laughs> um, so then, excuse me, I'm going to cough, I'm just going to pause. Okay, <laughs> just having a sip of my drink. Um, yeah, I um, decided to pick another deck. And because I've been so excited to have the Tiny Traveller version of the Sasserai Beto, which again has gone downstairs in the cupboard with um, the Brown Witch Lenny and some of my other like travel decks that I showed in that tarot... Uh, everyday carry video that I did in response to uh, Marlena Teresa um you know like my um Morgan Greer in a tin um and I've got my oh my 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 pocket um Marseille Pondre V down there now again so uh yeah they're my little t grab bag grab bag um tarot decks but I was like oh yeah Sasa Robito and <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to like not work with this deck it's one of those decks it's like the numinous tarot uh the sasaro beto the fifth spirit and the next world seem to be um the decks that i'm always like mm, they always like come back mm, they're the ones that i gravitate to a lot um and weirdly like none of them are, are pip decks even though i would class myself as more of a pip girly these days anyway so i should just shut up and show you some blimpin cards um i love this deck i love it so much i it's beautiful it's um i've had it for i really don't know when i got it i guess i could look back on my channel and see when i posted an unboxing of it because I know I did an unboxing of, and walkthrough of this, or I'm fairly sure I did, and that would tell me, I want to say 2018, so if that's the case, that's six years, where does the time go, maybe 2017, I don't know, I want to say, I want to say 2018, but um, I don't think, the book might say, but the book doesn't, I've got the edition where the book doesn't fit in the box, the book's over there because I've been working with it so I always have whenever I work with a tarot deck and sometimes I will even pull the little white book out from a deck if it's like a mass market deck I will always take the guidebook and put it next to my altar because even though I'd say I'm pretty au fait with tarot at this point and, and 
it blows my mind pretty au fait with both like a Smithwaite way of reading I do read them differently but then there is a little bit of crossover sometimes you know it's amorphous but also like Marseille a little bit of both to a lesser extent um I, I still like to know especially if it's an indie deck I still like to know what the artist's intention was and if they've written about it I, I, I find that really I find that input really interesting so I usually do my interpretation of a um, reading or a card if it's a single card draw um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll write a little bit and then after the fact I will read the intro the intro the entry from from the guidebook and sometimes write like a little quote from the creator um that i find interesting um and it's just it just expands the way that i think about you know each card but yeah so the sasaro vito and i'll do a bigger goody can i speak and i was preparing this with the um uh again like i said with this um between the worlds oracle and i decided because i had been working with the brown witch lenny and um also the lilac lenormand but mostly the brown witch lenny for like a long time <laughs> like a lot i might be obsessed um i was like okay let's just pick a different lenormand it's okay the brown witch lenny is still there it's okay i literally kept it next to my journal with this in case i like needed it <laughs> So I decided to go with The Seeker's Lenormand by Skullgarden, um, which is a Lenormand deck that, you know, in, historically I've really enjoyed. I also have the mini version that was very kindly sent to me by a friend. He sent me the, the standard size and the mini size, which I was just blown away by. Um, but it just wasn't, I wasn't picking up what it was putting down. I just wasn't. It just wasn't speaking to me and I just couldn't, I stuck with it for the full week. So this would have been, you know, going into the second week into um, March. And I just couldn't get on with it. And I think what had happened is I had built such a rapport with this deck and was just really, for some reason, it just speaks to me. It just speaks to me. It's No, it doesn't speak. It sings. It sings. The readings I got, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. The readings I got from this. I should pull. I should at some point pull out my tarot journal and just go through some of the readings and the things that I wrote. So what I would do in the morning, I would do the reading, two or three cards, write a little bit, blah, blah, blah. And then not always, but if something really like freaked me out or like really blew my mind, I come back and I do like a reflections. And I would, so you would see where I'd written in the morning, this, this and this, I think this means this. And then like the reflections either that night or the following morning when I was doing the next day's reading, I'd be like, oh my god, da, 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 da. <laughs> this deck. And it's funny, right, because I've been reading Lenormand on and off for about, I think I first really started digging into it in 2018. So like, again, what, six years, what even is time? I can't even. And I, it's it's probably my least, like, I'm, I still feel like I'm very much a Lenormand. A, beginner's probably not the right word. Beginner to intermediate. I, I don't think I'm au fait enough with it still. Which is part of the reason I was like, I'm going to do daily readings with Lenormand instead of Tarot. Because firstly, I want to use this deck more. But also I just want to re... Like I find my memory so bad. I'm forgetting things that I've learned and I'm finding it very frustrating and also quite concerning. Um, <laughs> so I, yeah, I, I, um, I can't remember what my point was. Case in point, brain fog. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I can't remember what I was saying. Oh my god. Anyway, so yeah, so I was working with that and this this deck, and they sort of jive together. They look nice together. But yeah, I was like, mm, no. So then the third week of March, so last week before I got quite sick at the end of that week, I um. I was like, right, let's let's pull a different like spooky vibed deck because you know I love me. And so I decided to pull the spooktacular Lenormand, which has like a skeleton box, which I love. Which is why I've never made a pouch for it because it's just so fun. I mean, part of me would love to make an embroidered version of this, but I like I just it would be so fiddly. And then when I'm sewing it together, I'd probably mess it up. Um. Unless I made it out of canvas and painted it. Oh. 
Anyway, sorry, I'm just coming up with my ideas. I still need to make a pouch for my brown witch Lenny because I've got some cute, like, witchy, tiny, like, witchy charms that I think would be cute for that. Anyway, so I decided to pick the Spooktacular Lenormand. Um, and again, at the same time, I kept the um, Sassarabito Tarot and the Between the Worlds Oracle. Uh, this is the yeah, Spooktacular Little Mall. It is out of print and it is by the, again, this was one that was um, sent to me or like traded. I traded like pouch, a pouch for this with someone who was very kind to send it to me. Well, they offered it to me. They said, you know, like, can I send it to you? And I was like, that's really lovely of you, but please let me like make you a pouch because I just, you know um but yeah it's a really like line art spooky it's really fun i guess again you could say it's like a halloween themed but again i don't care i'm i like weird spooky creepy stuff all year round um so you know it has two men cards and two women cards so you know it's it gives you extra options for like gay and lesbian um readings or if you are reading for more than like one woman you know you've got a, a situation with multiple people but it doesn't again it doesn't offer that sort of um non-gen like genderqueer non-binary kind of option which i honestly do like to have these days um if i'm reading for someone else because i have a lot of trans non-binary and genderqueer people in my life and i want them to be able to Feel represented in a reading that I'm doing for them but I'm reading for myself so it's you know usually less of an issue and sometimes I actually take out the people cards entirely when I'm reading for myself I've noticed because if I get like the woman card which I use for myself because I'm a cis woman I, I and then with something else for a two cards spread which I has happened over the last few months it kind of throws me a little bit because I feel like, yeah, well, I know that I'm right reading for myself, you know what I mean? So I feel like taking it out helps, um, which is also why I really like this deck because you have like the Seeker and Desire, which sort of takes the, um, the whole idea of it actually having to be a person in the first place, which is really nice. So yeah, I was using this and these, again, these all go quite well together these two go quite well together um yeah and so that's been fun but honestly <laughs> when I, i'm gonna I, i'm hoping tomorrow i'll have the spoons to do my week at full week ahead reading that i've been doing recently um um and i think i am just gonna be pulling this one in putting this one back into play again <laughs> yes awesome sauce so anyway yeah so those were the decks that i um worked with so let me just put the i'm going to pause while i put all these out of the way i don't know and again i said it in the last video i made like i don't know why i say hang on a minute because it's mere seconds not even a split second for you but for me it's like i'm faffing about so i am going to pause i'll be back once i've sorted all this out okay so those are sort of put out of the way for now um, as for decks that I'd like to work with next month, which is starting tomorrow, wow, <laughs> it's a quarter of the year gone already, um, other than like the Brown Witch Lenny, which I'll keep out and keep in play, um, I have pulled a bunch of stuff out uh, yesterday, I sort of managed to go through my collection and um, work out what decks I wanted to use for generally for spring which is something I've been doing like seasonally on and off I'll have decks that I would like to work with for the month or the season um, I was doing it more monthly last year but I've tried to just pull out generally for winter at the beginning of this year I pulled out a bunch of decks I generally like to use for winter and I've just pulled the decks I generally like to use for spring because I found doing it monthly was sort of winding me up a bit um so I've pulled out, I think, five sort of Smithwaite E based and five Pippi Marseille based and then a bunch of some oracles. I don't have that many oracles and um, some Lennies. So I've got the Brown Witch Lenny, the Lilac Lenormand and the um, Gilded Reverie Lenormand as well. Oh, sorry. So, uh, yeah, so that's uh, I, I, I'm thinking I might try and do um, a spring decks video at some point um and and if i if i have the energy and and you know i've been poorly because i did get two decks um arrive into my collection 
and I haven't opened them, looked at them, unboxed them because I just haven't been able to. They arrived just as I got sick. Uh, the first one being The Gay Marseille by Charlie Claire Burgess. It came with a lovely drawstring bag. I also ordered the set, the book that you could order separately and a stick sheet of stickers, but I will try. I mean, I was hoping to have had these unboxed and filmed and everything, but I just haven't been able to. Um, so I, I, the fact that I've not torn into this tells you that I've been rough. Um, and the other one is the um heartwood tarot uh from three trees tarot which i'm also very excited about and the sticker on the back is the little squirrel the boy sleeping and it's really cute because i actually have a print of that one um, up uh, above my desk to the side there on my bookcase and um, which i get to look at all the time so it's like oh it's my little it's my little friend so these are the two decks that came into my collection and i haven't i haven't they're both in their wrapping um Oh, look at how this is beautifully. This is wrapped. Oh, lovely. Um, so yeah, the, watch this space. I will. I mean, everyone in the like who's ordered this is probably that have received this have probably already done videos on this. I've only watched Tom Benjamin's walkthrough of this. Um, I, I I was following the creation of this over on um, Instagram. Um, but yeah, I I um I just haven't got around to doing my my own one. And is it superfluous me also making a video walkthrough unboxing of a deck that now has probably been shown a bunch of times? Maybe, but also I find doing the walkthroughs and thinking aloud, speaking aloud, um, kind of like helps me formulate my. Th thoughts and initial impressions on a deck rather than just opening a deck and looking at it on my own quietly so I, I do find that at least it benefits me so it's like selfishly I'm like I will probably make a video um books that I read I didn't complete any books um I again the last two weeks I haven't been able to read really anything um and I didn't really have much time to read the first two weeks because I was quite busy so I'm still working my way through Hilary Mantle's Wolf Hall um really enjoying it and um I've also been uh, re-watched the the show which I'll talk about later um I've got a very small way into braiding sweet grass uh, by Robin Wall Kimmerer which I what I've read so far I've really loved it's really uh i'm just yeah i can see why people love this book but i want to like talk about it once i've finished it and then i managed to get through a bit of um new moon magic um which is by the the um, reese dickens and amy to uh Turok, who do the missing witches podcast which i've also been listening to for several years now um this it looks like oh i've read so much but it's not it's quite um it's quite large print and it's sort of in chunks but yeah it's um I, i'm really enjoying this and actually the, these two together are quite i'm reading what i'll do is i'll read a little bit of this and this usually in the same setting um they they feel like they go together nicely because um they're, they're both about similar not similar things but they sort of vibe really nicely with each other and actually this book braiding sweetcast is referenced uh, quotes from Robin Wall Kimmerer in this book is referenced in uh, this book so it was uh, yeah that's clearly go well together because the they the um the the witches that wrote this are very aware of Robin Wall Kimmerer's work so that's been slow going and I you know I'm hoping I will be able to finish all of these in April who knows I might even be able to start new ones but I'm not gonna like push myself because I'm now out a whole week of not being able to work and last week I wasn't able there were days where I couldn't work because I had the family responsibilities and so <laughs> it's been I'm almost like two weeks of like not having been able to do the work that I need to do so now I need to get back on it as soon as I'm feeling better and I'm still not 100% so who knows when that will be. <laughs> um, but I did get some new books into my life. I say new. Uh, these were birthday presents from my mum, but because my I hadn't seen my mum on my birthday, and I like seeing her almost two. Well, when would I get these from her? Last week. Um, 
yeah I saw her last week and was able to get the books that she had bought for me uh, for my birthday um, and it's really funny right because I put these on my Christmas wish list and they're kind of like wintry dark witchy Victorian drama type stuff witchy supernatural drama -y type stuff from what I remember I can't even remember like what these all these books are about but I have the um Circus of Wonders and it's all fiction no it's not one three fiction and one witchy book um because I was just really wanting to read like more fiction um because I've been reading a lot of non-fiction um Circus of Wonders by Elizabeth McNeil um I think is Elizabeth McNeil the one that wrote The Doll Factory yeah uh, which was her first book which I absolutely loved like I really loved that so I'm hoping that this is going to be just as good if not better than The Doll Factory I've got uh, Opium and Absinthe by Lydia Kang um you know it all just sounds very wicked, witchy and like spooky and again I think yeah 1899 you know I love me a Victorian era like supernatural or just like a vintage like spooky story that's why I think I really liked Mexican gothic because it was a true gothic horror um but it was set in 1950s Mexico which made it really interesting because it was so different to you other settings that I would otherwise usually if that was like a, an English writer they probably would have set it in Victorian London or something um but they, they you know because it it's a Latino writer Mexican writer uh she had written um it set in Mexico and I just it made it like way more interesting to like it just made it different and um, apparently the writer what's her name I've put it downstairs on the bookshelf because I finished it oh god um S S Maria Garcia no Garcia oh my god I'm so sorry my brain fog is so bad I can't remember words for things or facts or information um but yeah apparently the writer does like real genre j jumping and writes stuff set in all sorts of eras like apparently she's got like a a vampire novel set in the 1970s which I'm like well clearly I want to read that so anyway hang on I'm just gonna bug me because I feel like that's disrespectful that I can't fucking remember the writer's name and I said her name so many times last year because I was talking about the doc the but yeah Sylvia Sylvia Morena Garcia so I was you could tell I was I could kind of remember oh my god my brain <sighs> brain fog honestly it's not the one um the lost apothecary a novel by sarah penner this is the hardback i don't know if there's no this paperback hasn't been released yet i don't know it says 2021 so i don't know why my mum just didn't buy the paperback but she went for the hardback on that one i don't know um so yeah these are all they i feel like these all have like a vibe um, and now we're into spring. I'm like, do I save these for like when autumn swings back around and it starts to get darker? We literally just had daylight savings time overnight, which is throwing me off. Um, and then the uh, the nonfiction, the witchy book that I have is Christine Grace's The Witch at the Forest's Edge, which is something I've had on my wish list since it came out at least a couple of years ago, I think. Hang on, let's have a look. 2021 wow so three years now um yeah I've only heard good things about this um and I've heard Aidan Wachter reference this quite a bit so you know me if Aidan Wachter references it I'm like well I'm probably gonna want to read that um so that's all of the ducks and um, books what else let's just let's just tick those off so yeah uh, channels um YouTube channels so yeah I wanted to wish some channel versary like celebration wish people happy channel anniversary so sylvie over at tarot magpie celebrated their one year channel anniversary this month and they made a fun q a video so happy channel anniversary uh, that's a milestone is it making it to the first year it's always feels like it feels like such a um yeah it is it's such a milestone right i remember celebrating my first one as well um and then my friend my friend dear friend simon at the hermit's cave celebrated his seven year channel anniversary last weekend and i was involved in a live chat um with some other friends tarot friends um in in his usual uh, cup of ketchup and cards slot last saturday and that was a lot of fun i was already not feeling very well um 
And Sandra, uh, I picked up on it, bless her. She messaged me afterwards because she said she felt like maybe I wasn't 100% myself and she was right. Um, but I, I felt like I hid it quite well, that I wasn't feeling very well. But it was Sunday where I really, like, got bad. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, happy Channelversaries. Um, I also want to just give a shout out to Auntie Kay's Tarot. Krista, Auntie Kay's, Kay's Tarot, I've been really enjoying um, the videos uh, that she's been putting up. Um, T over at Cosmic Creeper Tube. I watched some of the, I watched her original hashtag video and then a couple of the VRs so far to Oracles with Attitude, which is quite fun to sort of shift gears and be thinking exclusively about Oracle decks. So uh, that's a fun one. If you haven't seen that hashtag, go check it out. It's a really, it's just, yeah, it's just a, giving us um, a, a different, looking at a different, well, I guess Oracles, technically tarot is an oracle but it's sort of a very prescribed system right which is why it always gets labeled as its own thing um but i mean you know oracles can be all sorts of anything and yeah i i because t said that she's been more of an on an oracle tip lately and a few other people i've heard a few other people say that i have been trying to use oracle a lot more in the last year or so and um yeah i guess i've been using le normand a lot lately especially for daily readings so um yeah i i, I enjoyed that um, and then I something completely un unrelated to tarot critical role I've, I, I've been really enjoying the candela obscura I'm up to date with the most recent round uh, they do three sessions each for candela obscura different stories different cases um, and the current one is where Liam O'Brien is um, being the GM for the story um, the is it the story the case of the crimson mirror or something i can't remember but it's it's really really i'm really enjoying it and the only other game that i'd seen liam gm was the nightmare before christmas from like 28 christmas 2018 i think it was um and so i was like you know what i know he's done a bunch of other one shots i'm gonna go look at them so i've already i've watched his um werewolf one the um lorelei one and then I watched, I accidentally, I didn't realise he did a bunch of other one shots when they were still over on Geek and Sundry. And I actually watched his full circle one before I watched um, his uh, Liam's Quest one. And I'm now on to Liam's Quest The Return. So I've watched them out of order, but I'm really liking Liam O'Brien's GMing style. It's... I, I'm, I'm really rating him as a GM and just it's it um, makes a change from other people that I've seen GM so much like Matthew Mercer who's obviously the main GM for Critical Role Brennan Lee Mulligan, Mulligan who has done stuff for Critical Role and obviously Dimension 20 um, Abrian Iyengar, Sir Abria, Abria Iyengar, um, who I love. She's she she um, GMs in a really interesting way as well. I like that they all have their own flavour. And actually, seeing Spencer Stark, who helped create the gaming system for Candela Obscura, and then also subsequently Daggerheart, which is now in um, sort of beta. It's being tested by you know the general public uh, to iron out any like issues and to sort of like finalize the game yeah spencer stark um i really enjoyed his candela obscura uh, um, cycle um really interesting way of gming uh, he's very cinema cinema graphic cinema top cinema graphic cinema graphic cinema top cinema can i i don't even know the what like i'm so sorry my brain fog is just off the charts today um, I'm surprised I haven't I've been I've managed to avoid stuttering at least but um, yeah he he um, cinematic a very cinematic way of um, it, describing what you know theater of the mind stuff it's 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 wonderful anyway um, so yeah I just wanted to say if you are a fan of you know tabletop RPGs or critical role or whatever but you haven't watched maybe Candela Obscura or um, because you're like, oh, I don't know, I, don't, I prefer the main campaigns or if you haven't um, watched any of Liam's one shots, really like give him a go. It's, it's, he's, he's really good GM. So very different to Matt Mercer, but I would say very good. OK, I'm going to what are we in? 45 minutes almost. You know what? In for a penny, in for a pound. I'll, if you want to bounce, you might have already bounced at this point. <laughs> 
<laughs> if you're still here i might go into some other stuff some music i didn't put any music down because i've just been listening to the same music as last time so like chapel rowan gunship <laughs> um lil nas x um uh, Agnes Obel, just like the same stuff I've just been listening to over and over again, basically. Um, podcasts, I thought I would mostly do a little bit different rather than um, recommending podcasts as a whole. I'd actually like point out specific episodes. So um, there's a podcast called Conversational Witchcraft. And there was a conversation with Risa and Amy of the, um, you know, the Missing Witches podcast. And, you know, they, and they're actually talking about this book in the podcast but it was a really interesting um conversation um and i really really enjoyed it so i would recommend that i can't remember what episode it is but it's one from like the beginning of 2023 i want to say um again i'll try to link everything in the description box um and then i've been listening to personal pans and um that is again another sort of pagan witchy magical high strangeness podcast um and they they the last episode was posted in the spring of last year there haven't been any other new episodes i've tried to find what has happened there but there's been no posts about it since on the creators you know twitter instagram website anything so i don't know what's going on but i've listened to a few episodes now and i i'm really really enjoying um some of the the discussions with people um but the first one that i listened to uh was episode 34 and it's called if you want magic to be effective you need to be fully present in it um and then actually i just finished this morning the latest episode of southern bramble podcast which i've spoken about many times on this channel i absolutely adore it um where they're talking about grass fred fred grass fred it's because I was speaking to my friend Fred yesterday on WhatsApp and now <laughs> grass fed witchcraft and just talking about um, making your witchcraft really, really local um, with regards to, you know, the plants, the land spirits that you're developing relationships with, the plants that you work with, the rocks that you work with, that kind of thing, like really um, the folklore that you sort of take inspiration from. Um <clears throat> And I and I it was a really great episode. I mean, I think all of their episodes are great, but might as well just shout out to that one because I just finished it this morning. Um, and then um, I've been really sort of getting into audio dramas or podcasts. Um, I've sort of stopped listening to um, the Sheridan tapes because I, I I decided to start. I heard an advert, and I think it was an advert during listening to the Sheridan tapes or another podcast you know when they'll have like an advert for another show and it was called The Sisters and it sounded so spooky and I was like I'm gonna listen to the first episode of this and see how it goes well I I I, I really think the production quality of The Sisters is far outweighed this sounds really awful but like it's it doesn't sound as stayed like some of the acting in the Sheridan tapes it feels very unnatural and very like radio showy in a like they sometimes will speak or respond in a way that people just don't really talk and it kind of bugs me a little bit at times i'm like but that's not how people speak in real life it's just very acted whereas the sisters feels really natural like you're literally listening into all this drama going on and i um it's really really good again i'll put the link down below it's based off of true events and it flips between uh 1960s uk and current day Philadelphia um, and it's around something to do with the Mutter Museum which I only know about because of Caitlin Doherty um, of uh, the Order of the Good Death and Ask a Mortician um, uh, doing videos with people from the Mutter Museum and talking about it in her videos uh, but yeah it's if you like creepy spooky well acted there's 10 episodes I've finished nine I've got one more to listen to I'm hoping to finish it the last episode today whilst making dinner i put my earbuds in and i like I, that's when i've been listening to it i'll put earbuds in and like make myself a little bit of food and uh the, the episodes are sort of 20 to 30 minutes so yeah I've, I've been really enjoying that um instagram i want to like just shout out my own 
Instagram account. Well, not my Instagram account. Dr. Nomi, my dog, has an Instagram account finally. It's a couple of months old almost. Uh, and it's called Nomi Bleps. <laughs> it's kind of a bit. But basically, um, I every day I post a picture of Dr. Nomi and her doing a blep. Which, if you don't know what a blep is, it's when a cat or a dog or any other cute animal, um, they their tongue gets stuck. They stick their tongue out. Like a mlem is a, that's a mlem. A mlem is quick, mlem. A blep is like, and since she had all her lower teeth removed, amongst others, um, a year ago, uh, she doesn't have the, the teeth to stop her tongue poking out. So it pokes out in really cute ways all the time. I'm constantly taking pictures of her. So every day I will post an adorable picture of Dr. Nomi with her tongue stuck out. And sometimes it's stuck out a tiny bit. And sometimes it's, really stuck out and sometimes it's sticking out the side and sometimes it's sticking out and she's got her lip caught on one of her teeth uh, her fangs and sometimes uh it's like a wiggly like a wiggly little blep <laughs> many types of blep there's many kinds of blep so i'm going to log that log that link that down below <clears throat> if you want to see um adorable dog stuff because she's a senior doggo now and i'm like i want to have a record of I don't know, I just, yeah, I'm aware that she's not going to be around forever and I think it'll be nice to look back on when she is no longer here. And I obviously I take photos of all the time, but having this, like, sharing this thing of her, um, you know, I'm not looking to, like, be, like, have Instagram famous dog. I'm not interested in doing all those, like, you know how people, like, have dog accounts, which I follow loads of them, don't get me wrong, but that's not what this is about. This is just me, like, wanting to, like, document how cute, my like, fucking cute my dog is and her blaps. Um, and then miscellaneous, um, yeah, I don't really have any misc stuff. I've not really, um, yeah, there's not really much to mention misc-wise. Um, I will say, um, my sh I did a shop drop last weekend and a load of the stuff went which was amazing um but if you are still looking for stuff i have two pouches left i think this is my standard little pouch in pink and a juice juicy pink and juicy orange with this little bird with a love letter and then it's got like a, a green lining um and then i have a small sized um um pouch wrap spread cloth thing that i make and um uh it's got the little unicorn on there come on camera oh unicorn and it's got a lovely blue with the the star so you can use it as a spread cloth but this is for like smaller decks or travel decks um so this makes it really good for traveling because you've got your deck protected which is why I made them like this. You've got your deck protected and then you open it out and then you can, you know, you can um, lay your spreads on it. And obviously you can, because it's reversible, you can use this side or this side as a spread cloth. And also you can wrap your deck with the plain side or with the embroidery, you know, the appliqued side. So then it also goes this way with purple and yellow, which is a classic combo because they are complementary colours. So yes, I am shameless self-promotion because I'm a small business and no one else is going to do it for me. Um, and I have a couple of patches I've got my um, hand patch and the little mushrooms patch, iron-on patches. So, uh, it's been really nice, actually, people that have been buying these, they've been sending me pictures of where they've been attaching them. Uh, someone attached one to their coat pocket, that was Imogen at Saplin Tarot, who bought one of these, like, ones and put it on their um, coat pocket, the Lucy and Yak coat pocket. Um, and then someone else posted that they had put it on their, their um, under the flap of their like um, record, their bag, their satchel, which is really cool. It's really great to see my, my work in action. It makes me really happy. So yeah, shameless, utterly shameless self-promotion. Like, So yeah, <clears throat> that is 53 minutes and change. Uh, I feel all like warm and flustered now and like I need to take this sweater off but I was a bit chilly when I first started this video but I think when I talk I start to get like animated and then it, I always get warm when I like start when I make videos does anyone else get warm when they make videos it's the same like if I'm with people in person and I like start talking and get excited I always get really like f my cheeks get so warm and that's why I'm with Marisha Ray that like sleeves are bullshit so I always have to have like t-shirt or tank top underneath unless it's really cold because i just don't 
like being overly overly warm so yeah so that's that's all that so yeah can't, oh, trying to wrap this video i've been doing a very poor job of it um what did what decks did you work with what combinations did you work with which decks came into your life into your collection uh, in the past month um i want to know i know a bunch of you have or like either some of you have received prototypes of this because i've seen already people doing walkthroughs of this and i've seen people doing walkthroughs of this it, like i just know i'm gonna love both of them they're very different but also like i know i'm gonna love both of them um and uh yeah what books did you read any recommendations for me any podcast recommendations for me i'm always like let me know i'm obsessed with podcasts <laughs> there's so many like books that i want there's some really great books like there's tarot for the work um and then there's um red tarot or decolonial tarot um i still but like and then there's so many fiction books there's so many witchy books that i want to read the problem is um my budget my energy like my spoons and my like and mental capacity and like time um are, are at odds with my desire my will and the amount of books that i want to read or the all the decks that i would like you know the same as for anyone right you could keep there's we a lot of us have certain constraints that stop us from being able to read all the things or have all the things but yeah it's really frustrating because i love reading and i sometimes really really struggle um and sometimes i yeah anyway i'm not gonna i'm just waffling at this point and i just i feel like i'm bo boring everyone if i have bored you all off away already um so yeah let's do some wrecks wreck me stuff back wreck me stuff back does that make sense <laughs> i'm thinking of like wreck w r e c k no wreck r e c recommend me some stuff let me know what you've been doing in the past month and uh, yeah what do you think of the stuff that i've been sharing have you read any of these books or worked with these decks stuff and things this is getting ridiculously long so i'm going to go thank you so much for taking time to watch this video and uh yeah i hope that wherever you are you are safe and you are well sending you lots of love ciao